my epic journey from Las Vegas, Nevada to Auto, North Carolina would cover over 2,100 miles in eight different states. So on day one, I went all out. I went 50 miles. But it was quite a busy day. I decided not to take the fifth wheel on this trip, but instead uh, take it over to Searchlight Nevada to put it into storage. After I dropped off the fifth wheel in Searchlight, I headed over to White Hills, Arizona, where my camper was in storage. After unloading some of my belongings into the camper, I then hitched up and headed to Kingman, Arizona. So while I did get up early and make reasonably good time, I didn't exactly beat the heat by the time I got to Kingman. It was already over 100 degrees. So I spent the afternoon sort of organizing and watching a couple movies, and then in the evening I took a dip in the pool and uh, grilled out a little bit. So yeah, I didn't get too far down the road, but I was just thrilled to get out of Las Vegas where I was developing a lot of anxiety over COVID and uh, the conditions at work. I plan to take a little less than two weeks getting to North Carolina. I'm not going to push it too hard and I want to uh, minimize the wear and tear on the tires and the extreme heat. My other primary concern on this trip are the window air conditioners. Um, about a year ago, the rooftop AC went out, and shortly after, I bought the fifth wheel and wasn't sure what I was going to do with the camper. As it turns out, I am going to take the camper on these longer trips for probably another year or two before I retire it, and I don't plan on spending the money on another rooftop AC. So, depending on the campground's policies, we'll find out if I can even use them. Looking at my weather forecast, it appeared there would be no relief from the heat for my first four stops. So my milestone destination would be Oklahoma, where I would finally get some relief from the 100 degree temperatures. Standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona, hoping it would happen to me. If a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford would just slow down and take a look at me. It ain't that easy. It ain't that easy. So I went and got a grilled cheese instead. Hey, I'm not a quitter, but it's over 100 degrees outside. No way. Well, after a very satisfying meal, it was time to do some more sightseeing, and my waitress recommended La Posada Hotel. Now, I had never heard of these Harvey houses, but apparently Fred Harvey built a very successful chain of uh, luxury hotels and restaurants on railroads. In fact, John Wayne was a regular guest here, as well as many other celebrities like Clark Gable, Mae West, Amelia Earhart, and Jimmy Stewart. Albuquerque would be my third stop along Route 66, and it's also the filming location of the show Breaking Bad. As it turns out, there's actually a tour company there that takes you to the different filming locations of Breaking Bad. And what I thought was funny about it is they actually take you on a tour of an RV that resembles the one in the show. So it's just an old RV, I guess. I opted not to do the Breaking Bad tour. I figure on this trip I'll just do a little sightseeing every other day instead of every day. Uh, and besides that, I have my own museum right here at the RV park, and it's absolutely free. Enchanted Trails not only has a vintage RV and antique museum, but also a nice clean laundry mat and a game room with a pool table as well. My original plan in Amarillo, Texas was to stay at the Big Texan RV Park where they reportedly pick you up in limousines to take you to the Big Texan Steak Ranch. But as it turns out, there was heavy construction in that area, so I went to AOK -OK RV Park instead. And, well, 
it's a-okay. There's zero amenities here. There's no office. It's just uh, self-check-in and no restrooms. In fact, you're now looking at the feature attraction of the park. Welcome to the Big Texan Steak Ranch. Not only is this a massive, massive restaurant, it also has a hotel, a horse motel, and an RV park. With several dining rooms, this is probably the biggest restaurant I've ever seen in my life. And if you can eat a 72 ounce steak here, it's on the house. And people actually do it. A young lady named Molly Schuyler a few years ago actually ate three of these 72 ounce steaks in less than 20 minutes. I guess I'm a little bit of a wimp. I just had a buffalo burger instead. So I had no idea that rattlesnakes could get this big in the U.S. This thing is massive and maybe just a little more venomous than the cowboy I just encountered in the restroom here. There I was just minding my own business, wearing my mask just like everyone that comes through the front door of the restaurant. Uh, these folks, however, came in through the back door uh, from the horse motel. And the little boy turned to his cowboy dad and said, Daddy... Why are all these people wearing masks? And the cowboy replied, I don't know, son. They ain't got nothing to do with me. Welcome to the divided states of America, where safety precautions are now a conspiracy. Yes, I get it. Over 200 countries across the world decided to collaborate and exaggerate their COVID numbers just to sabotage one lunatic's presidential campaign. And my friend didn't really die of COVID, and there's not really a pandemic. Well, after a couple of attempts to clean and sand the seven-way on this trip, um, everything still seems to be working, but I'm still seeing the check trailer light. It wouldn't be until my 5.30 start to Oklahoma that I found out what wasn't working, the runner lights. You know what? It's an hour delay. No big deal. I haven't encountered any weather on this trip, and even if I do have a little bit of rain, the runners aren't going to make much difference. Oh, but wait just a minute. What about fog? I didn't even think of fog. Well, the two ways will just have to do the trick. I finally made it to Dakota, Oklahoma. Cooler temperatures and rain. I'm loving it. This is my first two-day stop on the journey, and my first order of business is relaxation. Here I am enjoying low tide at the lake. Okay, so I'm not very good at charcoal grilling, but somebody did leave me nearly an entire bag, so I decided to go ahead and use it. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't look great. I butchered it, I get it, but it tasted wonderful. So here's what I found very unique about Terra Star RV Park. You have this large section where there's these residents and they have these large pads, these beautiful decks and um, uh, awnings and ceiling fans, just gorgeous uh, spaces. Uh, it turns out they're, they're rather pricey. It's some sort of timeshare rental deal I don't completely get, but I quickly determined it was out of my price range. I am sort of... Um, Looking for possibilities for my fifth wheel, however, uh, because I've determined that I, it's too much uh, rig to tow. First things first, it's time to get this show on the road again, and I had to do the repair on the seven-way, which turns out it's a good thing I did because uh, the brakes were also not working. No, I'm not in the desert anymore. I'm in the Ozark Mountains, and I'm loving it. Uh, and rather than drive straight through to Tennessee, I decided to make it a short trip today and stop at a place called Hillbilly Haven. So I'm here at Hillbilly Haven in Arkansas. I can't find the office. So I walk in this hair shack thinking I might find somebody, but it's just a laundry mat with a bunch of graffiti on it. What the hell's the matter with people? This is destruction of property and I can't stand it. I so disgusted I just walked right back out and some fella rode up to me on the tractor and said, Can I help you? And I said, Yeah, I'm just looking for the office. He said, You're looking at it. One of them mobile offices, I reckon. Well, this failure just told me to pick me out a spot and then just drop a check at the mailbox at the laundromat here. And so I did. 
And after a little nap, I went for a walk around the campground, and the same fella came riding up to me on the tractor. He said, well, would you like some jerky? Hey, yo, yeah, I'd like some jerky. And then he said, well, you be sure to go write your name on that wall on the laundromat, would you? And that is how I got some free advertising for the Hillbilly River Cat. In all the years I've been a full-time RVer, this marks the first time I've ever been east of Arkansas or the Mississippi River. My Garmin rarely ever gets me lost, but on this occasion, as soon as I got close to my destination, it took me on the back roads of Mississippi. It was very muddy and very, very bumpy. My misadventure didn't quite end there. I did make it to camp, and I picked the most gorgeous site in the entire campground and wondered why, why isn't anybody in this site? Why well, soon found out. There was almost no way to back into it. Not wanting to scrape my black tank, I decided to move elsewhere and watch somebody else try it instead. I felt a little bit better when he also couldn't back into it. The fun didn't end there either. The rains came. They came hard. And I soon found out that I had a leak around the air conditioner unit. But wait, I'm still not finished. I had to buy new tires, and a very pricey pair of tires they were, being in small town Tennessee. And what do I do as soon as I buy them? I get them muddied up, because that's what I do. Thankfully, I didn't have as much trouble getting out of Salisbury, Tennessee as I had getting into it. It was a pretty easy drive to Arley, Alabama. Hidden Cove RV Resort is on Smith Lake, which features a lot of beautiful rock formations. The clubhouse overlooks the lake and is one of my favorites in the Thousand Trails system. I had a nice visit with my cousin here and I really enjoyed this resort. It's worthy of a two-week stay and I'll definitely do it in the near future. Well, 2020 has certainly been a very rough year. Uh, my profession is still in great jeopardy and despite that, for some reason I have this feeling that this is the beginning of the rest of my life, like something positive is going to come out of it and there's new opportunities on the horizon. Okay, so I have to share this story with those of you who believe in animal symbolism because I thought this was kind of a crazy coincidence. At each of the last two campgrounds, both in Tennessee and Alabama, I hitched up and was pulling out of the campground and with 50 yards of the campground, there was a dog lying in the middle of the road. Both times I had to come to a complete stop the dog stretched its legs, got up, and trotted away. Merely a coincidence or is it a sign? Is it a coincidence that the town I'm getting ready to camp in is spelled the same backwards as it is forward? Auto! Auto. Auto.